Boo. Hey everybody, Video Game Dad here, and today we're talking about horror games that you may not have heard of or played that I think are very, very good. And, you know, I play a lot of horror games, some very good, mostly very, very bad. So today we're just going to focus on the good ones that you may not have heard of, and if you have suggestions for horror games I should play, let me know down below. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to start off with an honorable mention here because I didn't actually finish playing this game, but I really enjoyed it, especially the first part of it, and that's Fear the Moon. Fear the Moon starts off as one of those, you know, usual PS1, PS2 style horror games where you're going camping with your friends and you encounter a werewolf. Now, the first chapter of this is very good. I mean, you get to feed a raccoon hot dogs, so that's pretty neat. Oh, look, it's got the hot dog. Okay, well, this is the best game ever. 10 out of 10. Look at this raccoon eating this hot dog. 10 out of 10 game. Not only can you feed raccoons hot dogs, you also get great jump scares like this from a werewolf. Uh, oh my god, holy, that scared the hell out of me. As your friends get picked off, you get picked off too. And I was like, okay, this game's pretty short. That was kind of weird. But then it goes to chapter two, and this is where it kind of fell apart for me. I did play a little bit more, but it kind of turns into a granny-like. Picking up items, solving puzzles, avoiding the werewolf in a house. And it was just kind of like I kind of lost interest at that point. But overall, I think the intro itself was incredible. And the game itself runs well and works well. Um, I don't have any problems with it there. I just kind of got bored of it. But it's still something I think you should check out. And if you like Granny, things like that, you'll definitely like the second part of this game too. Next up is a game that I think didn't get enough credit for being a great horror game. And that's Imaginary Friend Asylum. I think this game does horror and intensity and stress very well. It doesn't have a whole lot of jump scares. They come from time to time. But I think overall it just has this intensity to it, this tenseness that like something's always going to happen. And I think it just does so very well. You're a little child living in a, an asylum with a bunch of other kids, and you all have imaginary friends. And they're all very kooky look looking. I love Smudge. Smudge is my favorite. Um, but I think that they just play a part very well in this game. Um, they're always there to help you. They give you clues about what's going on. And you start to see as things unravel that this asylum may not be exactly what you think it is. And when it comes to, like, the monster showing up, I want to say monster. It's more like just a person. And the murders start happening. It gets really crazy. You got all these crazy dream sequences. It's just really, really fun. And I actually played all the way through this one, ending it by playing it on my stream. Uh, and it was just a lot of fun, and I think if you have not played this one, you definitely need to go check it out because it's really worth it. It's not too long, a few hours at most, and uh, it's really enjoyable, really creepy, and really fun. So go check out Imaginary Friend Asylum. Up next, we have We Are Not Alone. Now, this one was one, usually I don't play horror games or any game in general for more than like 15 to 20 minutes on my channel, maybe 30 minutes if I'm really enjoying it. But sometimes you find a game, especially a horror game, that you just want to play all the way through. And this is one that I knew going in would be about two hours. We are not alone. And so I just went ahead and played through the whole thing. Um, and it's just very enjoyable. You play this character who is going down into this bunker to be a part of a science experiment. But of course, things quickly start going wrong. People go missing. You're seeing creepy shadows and like people walking around and stuff's happening. The guards won't let you out. You're just discovering what's really going on. And maybe there had been people there before you, all leading to your... Well, I won't spoil it, but... I think it's worth the two hours that it, it took me two hours and I wasn't really rushing through it. So I think it should take anybody about two hours to really enjoy the exposition, enjoy the dialogue, and enjoy the creepiness that comes with We Are Not Alone. It's just totally worth it. Go check it out. All right, this is another game that just, I, I got some good jump scares out of it, and that's called The Stalked. And it gave me jump scares like this. Oh, Jesus. Oh, now, I'm not always one for the jump scare fest, and this one isn't really. It's mostly tension. Every time I would leave the house that I was in, I would lock the doors behind me. I was always locking doors, even if nothing happened. But then you'd come back one time, and the door would be unlocked. Or you'd go, didn't I lock this door? Or why is that door closed? And it'd just start to get very bizarre, because you're being stalked by your ex-boyfriend. Or at least that's what you think. Who knows? But... I will tell you that it is very enjoyable, very fun, and it's a short playthrough as well. I think it took me about 40 minutes um, actually enjoying it. I even, maybe longer, because I think I got lost at one point. That does deduct some points in the fact that there's a lot of invisible walls and I lost direction, and also I just wasn't paying attention, which is just, that's my thing. I, I miss the simplest things that get me lost forever. But overall, it's just a very enjoyable story to be a part of. And Home Safety Hotline is part call center management, part analog horror, 
all parts amazing. I actually even played several videos worth of this game because I was having so much fun with it. You work as a call center employee who takes calls from random callers and they have all these issues and it's your job to determine what their issue is from things like carpenter ants to termites to bats to terrible ethereal horrors that live within their house. And it's just so much fun. I'm actually currently watching a four and a half hour video that explains the story of this game uh, because I didn't finish it. I died, uh, or I wouldn't say died, but, well, just figure it out for yourself what happens when you lose and you get too many wrong answers. Uh, but it's just so much fun, and I just, it's just so much fun to see this analog horror played out in video game form. There's so many creepy little things that happen, and as your shifts go on and on, it just gets weirder and weirder. The issues that these people have get weirder, and if you give them the wrong answer, boy, it is not good. It's not good. But I have to say, go play Home Safety Hotline. It's so much fun. I promise you, go play it. You will not be disappointed, especially if you love analog horror. Finally, I can't do this kind of video without mentioning some sort of Japanese horror game. And this one is called Night Security. And this one was another one that I just played all the way through. I don't do that very often, but it's great because it gave me jump scares like these. Whoa, Jesus. Okay, that got me. Ah. And I just have to say that... These kind of horror games are just ones that I love. They can be very good and they can be very bad, but this is about hidden gems, and Night Security is one of them. It feels like a chill as art game or any of those types that you've played, probably played before. This one is much like those, very well done, and it has those jump scares like the one I showed you where if you want to jump scare me, if you haven't been part of the streams or you haven't watched these videos before, know that my biggest jump scare moments are when something is right behind me. It doesn't have to jump. It doesn't have to scream. It just has to be standing behind me, and it terrifies me to no end. I don't know why, but this one was a lot of fun. I played all the way through it, and you should definitely go check it out. Go play Night Security. So those were just a few games in the horror genre that I think are really worth your time and may not have gotten the attention they deserve. No Five Nights at Freddy's, no Garden of Bamba, none of that crap. These are good games that I feel you must play if you really enjoy horror games and you haven't played them yet. Again, if you have any that you want me to play or you think I should check out, I play spooky games every Sunday. For some reason, the schedule just kind of goes that way. I play spooky games every Sunday, so go check those out. Go check out anything else on the channel. I appreciate you. I love doing videos like this. Um, let me know what you think down below. And maybe I'll see you next Saturday with another one. We'll see. But I love you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe. Bye-bye.